Hey, hey, the Grom build is back underway. I could blame COVID for delaying some of the parts, and I mean, that is true, it did, but I did have everything I needed to crack on with this phase of the build. I just got distracted by another little project that I've got now. Today, I'm planning on stretching and lowering the rear end of the bike, so by the end of this video, the stance should be pretty much spot on on the back end. It'll just be missing a set of fatty wheels. Good news, the fairings have arrived as well, five months after I ordered them. So that's another thing to fit, and so is my riding gear, so I can actually take this thing out on the road now. Uh, anyhow, I've made you all wait a month, so I might as well just jump straight into it. Let's do it. Here's a quick side shot of what the bike looks like at the moment before I go against all of the engineers at Honda and undoubtedly destroy its handling. It's tiny, isn't it? First things first, I had to pop it up onto a paddock stand, and then it's just a case of stripping everything down as you would if you were changing the rear wheel. If you don't know how to do that, well, neither did I really, but I figured it out, and here's a quick guide to show you how. First off, get the sprocket cover out your way. You can probably do this without taking it off to be honest, but it'll make it a bit easier when feeding the new chain on later down the line. Next up, you've got to get rid of that existing chain. Now, fortunately, my split link is a very manly shade of pink, so I could spot it a mile off. Pinch it with a set of long nose pliers, knock the links out, and away she comes. The stretch kit comes with a new longer chain for obvious reasons, so I just bung this one in a pile with the rest of the standard stuff that I've already taken off the bike. The chain adjusters had to come off next. A 10mm, followed by a 12mm nut, just because the Japanese love using odd sizes that we never normally use in the UK for some reason. Then you've just got to fling those to one side and all. There are a couple of well torqued nuts to crack, like this one on the rear axle, so make sure you don't rip the bike off the stands when loosening it off, but apart from that, it's all plain sailing. I thought this part of the build was going to be quite tricky to do, to be honest, which might be the reason why I've put it off for a few weeks, but it was super easy if you're thinking about doing it yourself. Any road, once the axle is out and you've popped the wheel and little bobbin spacer to one side, you've got to rotate the banjo fitting on the brake line 180 degrees. This gives you an extra couple of inches of play that you'll need to reattach the caliper, after you've got the stretched section in place. If you back the bolt off ever so slightly, you can get the play needed to do this without having to go through the chew-on of bleeding your brakes later on down the line, so just take your time doing it. Right, now comes the actual installation part. I was kind of expecting to have to hammer the hell out of these billet stretch links, or brackets, whatever they call them, to get them to slide into the swing arm. I even bought myself a new rubber mallet for the job, but I could have thrown them in from 5 metres away, they were that slack. Anyhow, here's a closer look of how it should all be set up. So that's the stretch kit fitted. Uh, you want to have like the little markers for the uh, chain tensioner tool to fit in on the outside. You want to make sure that the cap screw or Allen bolt, whatever you want to call it, is on the top as well, so you can get access to that nice and easy. Uh, slide it straight into the swing arm, pull it right back, and then fit your little bolt through one of these holes. I've fit it in the furthest one. Your little washer goes on in between that and the box section of the swing arm. Nut and washer on the other side, and it's pretty much the same over there as well, except you just have to put the brake caliper slider on there as well. A uh, bit annoyed that I've just spotted a piece of a little bit of rust on the underside of the uh, where I'm going to fit the lower in link soon but all that muck was hidden under the rear hugger when I washed the bike so couldn't have uh, I couldn't have noticed it so anyway I have to crack on now to fit the back wheel so yeah like I said it was just a case of refitting the rear wheel you might have to prise the pistons back open on your caliper if you knocked it but mine were all right I haven't bothered refitting the new chain just yet, as it'll probably get in the way when I pop the rear lower in link in, but I'll run out of time. I had to go to work. So just like when I was installing the Hyper Pack, I had to roll it back into the garage and pick it up a few days later when the thunderstorms had passed. Now I'm fairly sure you can fit the 2.5 inch lower in link without the stretch kit fitted, but if you're wanting to drop it 4.5 inches like me, it only takes a quick google to find out that you'll have some fitment issues without the stretch. It's also recommended that you buy an aftermarket shock with an increased spring rate, and if you have say a all in shock with an external reservoir, you might have to relocate the can because of clearance issues. But apart from that, the only other problem lowering your bike 4.5 inch will throw your way is when you come to park it up. You'll have to cut the kickstand so the bike rests on a bit of an angle, or you can go buy an aftermarket one for about 100 50 quid. I mean, obviously I'm not the best with money, but 150 quid for a kickstand? Really? As for the installation of the lowering link, you've probably noticed that I've been fitting it in the background while I've just been gabbing on. It's really simple to install. It's literally just a case of taking the bolt out the bottom of the shock, attaching the link to where the shock used to sit, and then refitting the shock to the holes on the far side of the lowering link. It's probably a little bit easier to do with an extra pair of hands on standby to slide the bolt in, as you need to take the weight of the bike to get the holes to align, but I managed on my own. Just. No. 
Just for reference, I cut the kickstand about 60mm up from where it used to sit on the floor, and it might be leaning over a little bit too far, but I can soon sort that out by sticking a little rubber boot on the end of it. But I think it looks pretty good so far. I'm kinda hoping that when I lower the front it'll open the space up between the exhaust and the rear tyre, because with me sat on it there's next to no room for a licence plate. But we'll soon see because that's the next thing on my list to fit. That as well as test fitting the fairings, but I'm not sending them back, I waited 5 months for them. If they don't fit, I'll make them. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, drop it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Grom content just like this because there's still plenty of things left to do on this bike. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one, bye!